Welcome to this week's Impact, ladies and gentlemen. We are now into the group of 16. Now, I know a lot of people are very tired of seeing this type of situation. I'm sure a lot of you are probably not even watching much anymore. But I still state this. Comparing TNA to WWE, at least we saw faces that we normally would not see. And there is still a good possibility when TNA goes to pop TV, we will get a better product. I'm not saying that it will happen, but I'm saying it's a possibility. So I would still suggest you consider watching TNA for a little while longer. Wait and see. But let's see what we got here. We got mainly matches, as usual, with very little character development, very few interviews. But I will say the matches I did like, and the one match that pissed the frack out of me, and the other match that just made no freaking sense. EC3 versus Zima An, I believe, was a very good match. We don't normally see an EC3 go up against a Zima Ion. And Zima Ion is a very loved character still. As much as people think that he's nothing but a damn jobber, people still love DJ Z. They do. So seeing this match, and it was EC3 who won, was not surprising. I'm not going to talk about Bram's match against Davey Richard because it wasn't interesting to me. Uh, it's good to see the match. It's good to know that Bram is now back with the company. I'm glad he's back with the company, but since there's no development for anything for Bram, I wasn't expecting him to really win here. Davey, they have put something on him because of the wolves. Shira versus Eli Drake could have been a great match. The problem was Eli Drake was not allowed to talk. Come on, TNA. You know between Mahamali Shira and Eli Drake, Eli Drake is a stronger talker. Now, understand the vid package for Mahamali Shira. It was a good vid package, but you could have also given us something from Eli Drake. Because you really want to put Mahamali Shira over, you need someone to put him over. So, Mahamali Shira winning the match was not enough. It was an all right match. But I would have liked to hear Eli Drake, the master of the universe, knows that this will not be a pushover match, even though this is a pushover guy. I know that Muhammad Shira is a little dangerous, but it does not mean I cannot be carefree and do what I do, and that is to dominate. That is why Eli Drake is the best. And I am the Prince of Eternia. That would have gotten Muhammad Shira a bit more over than he was. But we didn't get that. And I felt like that was a very lost shot right there. Rude versus Matt Hardy. Now, we didn't get anything from Rude. No promo segment. We did get it from Matt Hardy, which is not surprising. They're still building between EC3 and Matt Hardy. And Matt did an alright job. But here's the thing. If you guys didn't notice... When Chrissy Hemi announced a Robert Rude, the it factor of professional wrestling. Ow. <laughs> that hurt. But where is the King of the Mountain title? Why didn't she announce him as the King of the Mountain champion? Well, there's one of two reasons. One, they just didn't want to accentuate the King of the Mountain title at all. They left it out. Or two, they decided to finally retire it. Now, I'm kind of hoping they don't retire the King of the Mountain title because going into 2016, going to a new network, it, you need as many titles as you can get your hands on. At least until you know that it won't go anywhere and then you can finally bury it in the ground and say it's done. So, I'm hoping after this, when they do go to Pop TV, that the King of the Mountain title will still be in existence. At least until we know that... The people who will be generally watching it, not only Americans and Canadians, but people in Europe will be watching it, that it will give them something extra. And that's what I want to see from TNA. They need extra right now. Consolidating everything down into a very minimal program is not always that good. I'm hoping that they'll keep it and not get rid of it yet. But this is just my feeling about it. Drew versus Lashley. Drew had some very good talking segments. And I understand why they didn't use Lashley. <coughs> sorry, I still have the flu. So if I cough periodically, I'm sorry. But 
It was good to see Drew get to talking because he's a great talker. Seeing that he didn't win wasn't too surprising because Drew is still young in TNA. I doubt they're going to let him go for the title again. Not until the middle to the end of 2016. I think for Drew, once he turns heel, they will let him go after the title around the middle of 2016 if they ever turn him heel. And I do believe they will. <sighs> I have to think about this one. Eli versus Kenny King. Now they tried to hype this up. They did. They did try to hype this up, but it just didn't feel like much. You know what it is? The Pope did a good job during the match. Josh Matthews did a good job during the match. There was no promo before the match before, before e, um, Eli or Kenny King. And the problem with Kenny King is this. He still skips around the ring. I'm not against Kenny King. I really believe he's a great talent. I truly believe that he could easily be in the main title scene. Even if he's not a main eventer, he can be a transitional champion. But here's the problem with Kenny King. He acts too juvenile. Now, I don't know if that's his own decision with his character or Tina had forced him to keep that character the way it was. And when it came to the Pope, talking about him, saying that he didn't do that well during 2015, especially teaming, teaming up with that team and having the attitude that he had was true. But when it really comes to Kenny King, if he truly wants to be something different, he has to drop the kitty thing. He's got to stop skipping around the ring. He has to be more meaner. He has to be more tougher. He's got to drop the moniker of the kid. He can't do the King of the Night because he skips around like a little damn kid. And that hurts me. He's a good talent. I'm not surprised Eli won here. He's been one of the most consistently built people during this year. So he had to be there. Now, I got to do this, ladies and gentlemen. The two matches that truly angered me. You know what they are. Because they're the only ones I haven't talked about. Tigra Uno versus Gail Kim. I'm going to say this simply. Seeing Tigra Uno win, nothing. I mean, uh, I have to say he won nothing there. It was a good match. Gail Kim did a good job and she didn't win. And I'm alright with that. I didn't have a problem with that. I do believe he overdramatized having to face her in the ring because in AAA back in Mexico, you got women wrestlers going against men wrestlers. So when it came to Josh Matthews and the Pope really bringing and hammering that home, it makes perfect sense. He shouldn't have had that kind of conf conflict. And that's the reason why I felt like he really didn't gain anything. He wasn't acting chivalrous. Especially when he jumped over the ring rope and landed on Gail Kim's head. Damn, that looked ugly. She might be perfectly fine, but he had his chest slammed directly into her face. I thought that she was out cold with that one. But I'm alright with that. That was not the issue. But I did not like it that Tigra Uno acted timid. That just made him look weak. But here's the match, and you know what I'm talking about, that truly angered me. <sighs> Breathe. Awesome Kong versus Jesse Goddard. I really believe Jesse, the man Goddard, should be replaced with Jesse, the Adonis. I think that would be better. Or Jesse, the Adonis, Goddard, whatever. I believe the Adonis is better for him. I keep saying it, I'm going to keep saying it. He just doesn't feel like the man. I'm sorry, he just doesn't. But when it came to Awesome Kong coming down to the ring, and I said this in my booking for 2016, but that was between Awesome Kong and EC3, where he was trying to play up with her and trying to get a date and trying to do something with her. And Jesse did exactly as I thought he should. And Kong won over the crowd more than she was. Then she started proceeding to whoop the ass of a Jesse Goddard's. Jesse should have never gone 
over. I am being honest here. I know a lot of people will probably will agree with me and others won't. They'll probably say, come on, if Gail Kim didn't get over, how come a Awesome Kong could? Simple. Awesome Kong has worked as many places as Gail Kim has. Two, Awesome Kong is not a small woman. Hell, she was bigger than Jesse Goddard's by height and size. Jesse isn't a 100% a very tall guy. He's at least six foot tall. But Awesome Kong was taller than him. And she performed better than him. And let's be honest here. Between Awesome Kong and a Gail Kim, I'd rather see someone completely different in the last four, even though knowing that she would not win. I do believe she should have won. Continue going and win. That's what my booking would say. But I understand why TNA wouldn't really go that far. That was too big of a risk for them. So I understand it. But letting her reach the end of the four would have given more substantial, more substantial to the, the group of 16. Come on, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. You got all the regular guys there and one true eighth wonder of the world. And that is Awesome Kong. If, even if she didn't make it past the last set of people, of course, it would have still given us something so shocking. Oh my gosh. Awesome Kong's in the group of four now. Or the group of eight. I would make it the group of eight going into the group of four. But it is the group of 16 going down to the group of eight. So essentially speaking, seeing Awesome Kong here, lose was a huge huge loss for TNA. She could have progressed one more time and that would have given TNA something that WWE would never do into their own title series. They never even gave that chance to the Divas. Of course they're not the same size as the men but it would have been something entirely different. If you allowed Awesome Kong to go one or two more spots up you would actually think Oh my gosh, we got something different. It could have blown up Twitter. It could have blown up Instagram. It could have blown up Facebook. You could have put it on the radio. You could have put it on Sports Central. The coach, he, I mean, he still interacts with TNA. I mean, WWE, I'm sorry, I didn't mean TNA. He usually interacts with WWE, but Sports Center would have covered this. I'm sure the coach would have covered this. And they needed this. They want to try and build themselves up going to 2016 with the new network. And even if she only progressed one more time, that would have given them more clout. Something WWE would never do. And I feel like this was the worst thing they could have done. I can understand they wouldn't let her actually win the title. But I do believe they could have gained more for letting her at least go one more spot up. But this is my point of view. What about you? So I hope you enjoyed this Zane's view. Please give me a comment below. I will be getting my fourth booking of TNA into 2016. And that will be the X Division. Oh my goodness. You will not believe the person that I stuck on there. I may actually release it today. I normally don't release two in a week. So I might release it today. I'm not sure. I'm not really feeling well. I got the flu still a little bit. So I might not do it. But I am going to give you a little bit of a hint who it would be. I actually think I will release it on Saturday if it's not today. But here's the extra person that I'm going to be talking about. Oh, you can't see him. I'm sorry. I guess this is the best way to do it. You guys have a good day and have a good night. Peace out.